And then traders, this is Brad Goodwill with the weekly kickoff. All right, now this week is shaping up to be huge, right? In a number of different ways, trading opportunities, as well as general direction for the US dollar. Wednesday, we have the uh, US CPI numbers, okay? Going to be instrumental into whether the Fed cuts by 0.25 or a half percentage point. And we also have the ECB, right? The ECB is going to be a little bit of a tricky one because the interest rate cut of 0.25 is 100% factored in, right? There's no chance of a 0.5% cut. This is on the table and factored into the market. And if it's factored in, well, the only way is up, really. But this is the key to it. It's going to come down to the press conference from uh, uh, Christine Lagarde and see what the ECB have got for us. From this point on, the ECB is expected to cut, 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 cut for the next sort of 12 months. Right. So it's going to be interesting to see what the reaction is. As I said, don't forget, this is fully factored in. So Euro could go up. Right. And the US CPI numbers, if I just scroll through the calendar, will be the focal point for the week. And that's where a lot of trading activity will start right on Wednesday. But if we have a look through the market here, okay, you got a bunch of Japanese numbers to, to kick the week off. We've got some uh, Chinese CPI numbers on uh, Monday there as well. That's going to be important for the Aussie and Kiwi traders uh, in those time zones can check that out. You come into Tuesday, right? The week does get started very quickly. And we do have a bunch of sentiment numbers there in Australia. And as you've seen, sentiment numbers usually are, are a back tier number. But you know what? They are telling us a lot more about what's going on in the general uh, confidence, sentiment, et cetera. They can really impact. But Tuesday, it's, this is going to be a big week for sterling as well, not only the euro with the ECB. We've got the payrolls, employment change, the unemployment rate, average earnings. In amongst that, we've got the final numbers for the uh, German CPI. I don't think we'll see any change there. So like Tuesday, UK inflation numbers are uh, definitely on the radar, right? This is really going to give sterling direction. Now, you don't even have to really be trading these numbers, what we're looking for is get some uniformity here across the uh, unemployment numbers. And that sets us up for a potential big trade on Wednesday following the US CPI numbers. But definitely Tuesday, sterling and sterling crosses are going to be uh, a major focal point, right? Then you come back into um, Wednesday's trading. Then we've got a whole bunch of, uh, it's like opening the draw of the economic numbers for uh, the UK. These numbers with a red timestamp, they are the really high impacting numbers. And as you can see, we've got a bunch of them. Okay, the GDP estimates, uh, manufacturing output, definitely uh, services. Like there's a lot of numbers to digest here on Wednesday in sterling. So you know what? It may sort of discombobulate a bit, but most of the market is going to be waiting. And they're waiting for the big dogs, right? What I'm talking about is the US CPI numbers. This is going to be hugely important, obviously, for shaping the direction of uh, US dollar. CPI, 2.6%. The range, 2.4 to 2.6. You got the month-on-month -month numbers there. Then you've got the core numbers as well. There's a bunch of numbers in here, but really the year-on-year -year is what we're focusing on. Uh, we'll see how that plays out Wednesday. Huge for equity markets and the US dollar direction, right? It should really shape whether... The, East, uh, the Fed cuts by 0.5 or 0.25. All the numbers so far have been like subtly weaker with a nice 0.25% cut from the Fed. To me, that's that's what we need. We don't need a 0.5% because that sends a shockwave through the financial markets and we, we see a massive discombobulation, right? So Wednesday, I'll cover more of that when we get there. Then you come into um, Thursday and we have the ECB, right? The the, we've been waiting for the ECB to cut. It's just a matter of the timing of the of the event. Now, previously, okay, I moved 3.75%. It's the, the rate cut is going to be 0.25. It's like completely factored in. So as I said, with Euro uh and the other and the Euro crosses, are you are you selling those on that cut? No. But we'll come down to the press conference afterwards. We'll see what happens there. Um, so like the pressure is off the ECB on that meeting because they've done a good job 
forecasting the move and telling everyone this is what's going to happen, right? That's good uh, management. On that Thursday, though, too, we have the, 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 like the weekly jobless claims, the initial jobless claims. Uh, you've got some PPI data. You've got bits and pieces here uh, Thursday on the US dollar, but uh, not a huge amount. It's the, like the wig belongs to the US CPI Wednesday and the ECB, you know, Thursday. You come into Friday's trade, there are some bits and pieces here Eurozone industrial production, uh, University of Michigan prelim sentiment numbers, definitely worth a bow peep. That's, that's a sort of good historical number. And you got a couple of Canadian numbers there as well. So if you're planning on trading this week, make sure you are looking at the markets, definitely Wednesday going into Thursday. Now your charts, okay, they've been a bit hacked up, right? Just looking at the majors here on the hourly charts. And what I'm talking about is the price action there from the non-farm payrolls, not really conducive to an easy trading opportunity, but all you're basically doing at the start of the week is is revamping your charts, right? Just go and find the levels where these things got pushed and shoved around after the non-farm payrolls. I'd be leaving the uh, support line where it is there, it's sort of just broken down. You don't want to be sort of trying to tell yourself that it is uh, within recent ranges. And same for the Kiwi. It's just to, like, it'll take you five minutes, but do this on Monday, right? Get your charts tuned up because the idea is, you, when you come back during the week, you want to see instantly, visually, where the levels are on your charts that you should be focusing on. Okay, so to me, okay, the dollar still looking pretty good. Uh, but this is because, and I sort of covered this a bit on Friday, all the bad news in the US has already sort of been factored into the market. If all the bad news is factored in, then when the, the news comes out weak, the actual dollar rallies. And that's sort of sort of what we're seeing. But US CPI, as I said, will determine whether the ECB, I mean, the Fed, the ECB, getting hung up on that, uh, whether the Fed, this is the least probable action. This was like a 45, almost 50% chance of a rate cut before the non-farm payrolls. It's been reduced down to point, uh, sorry, 30% for a half percentage point cut. Weaker CPI numbers could see that increase again. And that's going to create volatility and hype and all a whole heap of things, right? So uh, Wednesday's US CPI numbers, hugely important to the overall scheme of things. Outside of that, just keep an eye on, you know, the general news, what's going on, what's the vibe of everything that's going down. I can tell you the markets and the new services will be focusing very closely on the US CPI numbers in particular, and then it'll quickly swing over to the ECB. The ECB for me is a non-event. We have to wait and see what they've got to say because everything's factored in, right? So, but the US CPI numbers aren't factored in. So when we are looking at the, as we go through the, the core part of the week, when we are looking at these numbers, you're really going to be uh, focusing hard on, you know, what the, the forecast or the Reuters poll is, and then looking at the ranges, trying to work out, okay, do they need to cut aggressively or not, right? The core numbers are expected to come out pretty much as expected, but the the inflation numbers, okay, prior number was 2.9. We get a number below 2.4, it's going to be panic stations, right? That that could lead to actually the dollar going up, but I'll cover that on, on Wednesday as we lead into those numbers. All in all, this is a really substantial week, okay? And if you have a look through the rest of the, um, the central banks, we've got the uh, this is sort of the, really the start of the cycle of cutting by all the central banks. ECB on the 12th, we've got the Fed coming up on the 18th, Bank of England on the 19th, um, and then uh, you've got the RBA on the 24th. They've come out and said they're not cutting rates anytime soon, which is, I find, a little bit dumbfounding. But uh, And then the Bank of Japan, they won't be doing much. But we've got everyone sort of tuned up here, right? And there are cuts factored in for a lot of these central banks, so you really need to pay attention. I'll do my best explaining to you what's been factored in, what hasn't, and what that means for the move overall. Because you could be going in with best intentions, but getting run over because you don't understand how the market fundamentally is set up. Okay, so your charts should look a little bit like this. If you look at the daily charts, okay, no major shifts there. The dollar, you know what, overall, the Fed are cutting rates pretty, pretty soon. 
for 12 months. That's what's been factored into the market. So let's just see how that plays out. At this stage, we have seen, uh, you know, some, I wouldn't say false rallies to the top side in euro and sterling, but we've seen the dollar weakness. Okay, we've seen a little bit of a flush out and these things are ready to go again. It just comes down to the number. Wednesday, the big day. Thursday, the back up. Good luck, guys. Have a good week. All the best. Cheerio.